This is Task Spoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log by doing one randomly generated task at a time. After completing the medium tier, I'm ready to attempt some of the longest and hardest challenges yet as I move on to the hard tier. Welcome to Season 3 of Task Spoon. At the end of episode 73, I rolled a task to get a unique item from the gauntlet. As unassuming as that may sound, I've never actually done the gauntlet before, on any account. In fact, I've never even done Song of the Elves on any account before. And that's just one of five quests that I'll need to do in order to access the elven city of Priftinus. Priftinus has some of the best and most convenient shops, skilling locations, bosses, and unlocks of anywhere in the game. The gauntlet has some incredible rewards, but arguably, just unlocking the city itself will be the biggest reward of them all. And this is the story of how I did exactly that. The first and by far the easiest quest on our adventure today is Sheep Herder. The quest involves just running around the arty area and disposing of some plagued sheep. I don't anticipate any issues with this quest, so we're just gonna get started right away. The five quests that I'm going to have to complete that I mentioned in the intro are Sheep Herder, Roving Elves, Morning's End, Part 1 and Part 2, and then Song of the Elves itself. Uh, and if you couldn't tell, there's a bit of a difficulty jump from Sheep Herder to the other four quests, but uh, it'll be nice to start it off with something a little easier and work our way up to the harder quests. Alright, here we go. Sheep Herder is completed. Cool. Uh, it, it took me like five minutes. <laughs> Time to move on to the harder ones. I am so excited to be able to do these quests. There are a ton of unlocks locked behind the elf quest line that I have been wanting for a while. Uh, armor and weapons and skilling locations, shops, etc. So very excited to be moving on to roving elves. I forget what I need for this quest, but give me a sec. I still remember, oh you mother, I still remember the first time I ever saw anyone using a crystal bow in game back in like 2006 and I thought it was so cool and I, cause I saw the glowing green arrows and I asked him, I was like, oh what kind of ammo is that? And he was like, oh the bow doesn't use ammo and immediately I was like, I need to get this bow, a bow with infinite ammo, that'd be so cool. And not realizing that it still used charges. And then I never actually got it because I didn't know how to do the quest and I couldn't figure it out. So, anyway, uh, roving elves, let's do it. Alright, roving elves has been completed. I will take a uh, bow, shield, I don't think it really matters, I don't know, I'm never going to use the bow, I might use the shield. 10,000 strength XP, cool, we're done! Uh, so those were the two easy quests, now we move on to the longer, harder quests in Morning's End Part 1, which again, I will need to go and look up what I need for that. But I can start it right away, so I have the teleport crystal back here, which is very convenient. So I was too lazy to go and get all of the items beforehand and ooh, a genie. I decided that I was just going to get the items as they popped up in the quest and I'm very glad I decided to do that because I just remembered that there's a dye shop in Letya so I don't have to go and make my own dyes anymore which probably isn't as big a deal as I'm making it out to be but there's so many quests where you need dyes and I always hated making them so now I can just buy them. This is, this is the worst thing they've ever tried to make us do. What, what, what is, okay, wait, wait, oh, 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 fire, oh, no. oh, did I get him? I got him. <laughs> oh my goodness. And with that, we should just have to talk to this guy, and we should be done. Talk about temple. There we go. 40,000 thieving, 25,000 hit point experience. That's not bad at all. And we have everything for Morning's End Part 2, which is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, and I got me 69 thieving. Nice. And 1,900 total. Cool. 
up until now, all of the quests I've done have been relatively easy and fairly short, but Morning's End Part 2 really kicks it up a notch. The Light Maze is notorious for being annoying and long, and uh, the list of items that you regularly would have to get on an Iron Man to get a Death Talisman is also fairly annoying. Fortunately, they kind of broke that aspect of the quest uh, with the Catalytic Talisman, which I have from Guardians of the Rift. So I actually get to skip that list, which is excellent. Uh, but the rest of the quest is going to be fairly difficult, so I'm going to go get ready to go. Fortunately, there aren't that many items that you need. Now, there are a lot of recommended items for stuff like uh, prayer and stamina restoration and all that. So I'm going to go get ready and then we'll go and get started. Now, the one advantage that I have that I'm sure most of the people who did this quest back in the day who have poor memories of the quest didn't have is this little thing called Quest Helper. Uh, I am fortunate enough to have a little blue box and arrow to tell me everything I need to click on and everywhere I need to go, so that is convenient. Uh, it still will be quite the process of running around and hopefully not falling, but yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. This is one of those obstacles that is infamous for people falling on it over and over again, and I was going to be so happy if I got on the first try there. <laughs> A second try! I could have sworn you used to be able to teleport, like, to the Dark Beast with a Slayer Ring, and then I looked it up and realized that you unlock that after completing Morning's End Part 2. So I was trying to get some stamina potions and come back here, and I thought, oh, I'll just take my Slayer Ring. Uh, that doesn't work until you complete the quest. I will say, of all the times that I've done this quest, this is probably, even though it's the time that I would say is the easiest because I'm just following the quest helper, and I've never actually done it with the quest helper before, every other time I've done it, I've been, like, looking at a guide or something, but this is the time that I've definitely followed along with the puzzle the most. I'm actually kind of surprised. I don't remember anything about it, but now as I'm going through, I'm like, oh yeah, if I point the mirror here, the light will go there, I'll turn it this color, I'll put a fraction crystal here. Like, it, all of a sudden, it all makes sense to me, and I actually think it's kind of a cool puzzle. I know I'm probably going to get hate for that, because, like, nobody likes this quest, but... You know, props to whoever made it. It is a very interesting puzzle. Now, with all that being said, I wouldn't want to do it without a quest helper. Don't get me wrong, it's not that fun, but it is cool. And just like that, we made it to the death altar. That was so fast. Uh, no, I'm not going to be doing your list. I'm sorry, Mr. Dwarf Man. I've got a catalytic talisman. But I started recording this quest at 11.15 a.m., and it is now 11.56 Meaning I did that in, like, 40 minutes. Incredible. I believe this is a hard arty task or something. I don't know. It said just bring a bring a pure essence and make a death rune for an achievement uh, diary thing. So, done that. And here we go. Morning's End Part 2 done. 60,000 agility experience. You love to see it. Uh, that's it. We can start Song of the Elves. Well, I needed to take a little break after that, and I was 9,000 experience away from this level, so I figured I'd just go and get it. 77 agility. Uh, there's a couple useful things that lets me do. Particularly, it lets me Agipot boost to use the 80 agility shortcut in Taverly Dungeon, which is nice. So, yeah. I needed a few minutes to plan out how I'm going to do this whole Song of the Elves thing, so figured I'd just run some laps and get that level. I'll put a screenshot on screen right here of the items that I need for Song of the Elves, and you'll notice I already have almost all of them, and the ones that I don't have are extremely easy to get. So that was really nice to see. Uh, I'm going to go and get the last of the items that I still need, and then we'll go get started. All right, all of the items have been acquired, nothing left to do other than go start the quest and hope for the best, and I didn't mean for that to rhyme. All right, Edmund, I am here to help you with your elven song. I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm I'm scared. Now, I do have two things going for me. One, I have Quest Helper on my side, so I just get to run around and click on the blue arrow, which is always nice. And two, I don't have to worry about losing my hardcore. 
that was sort of where I thought I might end up losing it, was either the, whatever, the Fragment of Saren fight, or in the Gauntlet itself, was sort of where I thought I would lose my Hardcore. So the fact that I don't have to worry about that is nice. But I don't really know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. I've never really seen anyone do it. I've never watched a guide. I'm just going to start, like I said, clicking on the blue things and I need some items. I'm going to be saving you guys a lot of me holding down the space bar. Uh, I'll leave a screenshot right here actually, but the next like 20 steps of this quest just start with talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person, go here and talk to this person. <laughs> so I'm going to be holding the space bar for a while. Well, the first real combat of the quest looks like I just have to kill a bunch of enemies that only attack with melee, so protect from melee should be more than enough, but yeah, at least I get to kill something. <laughs> Well, it wasn't hard by any means, but at least the little instance combat thing was kind of fun, I guess. Now I'm holding space bar again. Oh, is this like the Temple of Light before it was destroyed? Is that what this is? That's kind of cool. Oh, I didn't even notice, guys. I'm done. Look, you have unlocked Song of the Elves. <laughs> that, was, that was stupid. That was so stupid. I'm currently actually listening to that Song of the Elves music track, and I'm probably going to put it in the video. So the song you hear right now is the Song of the Elves. <laughs> I think JX's music team doesn't get enough credit. Like, obviously there are a few, like, super popular, more meme-like songs with Old School RuneScape, but just in general, the music is amazing. Oh my goodness, I think I'm done. Get me out of here. I've been in here for like hours, and part of that was because I ran out of staminas and didn't realize that I could leave to go and get more, and part of that is because my internet kind of sucks right now, and it's making everything slower, but I am so glad to be out of there. <laughs> okay, like, I get it. You want to put in another agility obstacle, but is this really necessary? Like, look how long this is! <laughs> Well, I was just waiting for my internet to fix itself and making some potions that I had uh, all the ingredients for already in the bank, and... 74 herb lore! Cool! Honestly, the biggest thing that does for me is lets my botanical pie boost last like twice as long when I'm making staminas. <laughs> so that's nice. So, I actually get to go do some more combat here. Uh, yes, enter the cave but I believe it is not particularly difficult. There is an archer and a warrior, but I think you can get the warrior stuck behind the archer and then just pray range, kill the range, pray melee, kill the melee. So hopefully I'll just do that. Wow, very difficult. I've sort of done all of the running around and talking to people parts of the quest. I'm now at the confrontation where I get to do sort of three different combats back to back, increasing in difficulty. So yeah, at least this is sort of nearing the end, but this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. Oh, apparently I'm fighting someone, so we're doing this now. Oh, apparently I'm supposed to dodge that. Okay, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so orange arrow is explosion on the ground, green arrow, regular attack, pink arrow turns my prayer off. Is that what's going on here? Looks like that's what's going on here. Oh, I was like, wait a minute, that was way too fat. Uh, that was scripted, I assume. But that's exactly why, for stuff like that, I don't like looking up a guide beforehand. Like, I could have known all those mechanics going into the fight, but it was way more fun figuring them out for myself. 
the Runelight Quest Helper plugin is honestly the perfect thing for me. Because it tells me what to do for all the stuff that I would look up a guide for, like just running around and clicking on these things. But it doesn't tell me anything about like the combat stuff and the fights that I generally wouldn't look up a guide for. So honestly, Runelight Quest Helper is my ideal plugin. This next combat section is one of the few parts of this quest that I actually have seen before, where you have to defend the gates from a bunch of guys, and then the big guy comes out, and he'll punch you, and then maybe hit you with a range thing. I don't really know how it works, but uh, this shouldn't be too bad. I'm more concerned for the last fight, but I do need to get through this one first, so let's just go do it. And I thought after I got my trident, I'd never have to come back here, but yet here I am, running through the underground pass yet again. Alright, I think, I think this is it. I think I just press I'm ready and we go and do the thing. So this was pretty easy once I realized that I could get these two guys stuck trying to hit me and then it blocks all the other guys from trying to hit the barrier but for some reason these guys aren't turning around and I just have to keep hitting the archers that spawn. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I believe now the big guy comes down. Well, that was suspiciously easy. What the hell was all that about? This is one of the few times that I'm actually going to look up fight mechanics before I go into a fight. Uh, this is a fairly difficult boss that I know a lot of people struggle with. Now, fortunately, she is weak to magic, and I just got my fancy new trident here. So that should be good. Uh, my stats are good. My gear is okay. Mystics isn't great, but everything else is pretty good. So I'm going to go look into what exactly this fight is all about. And then we will go and give it our best shot. Okay, honestly, this fight doesn't seem that hard. And I may eat my words, but it seems like there's only four mechanics. Uh, you run away, you hit the light colored clone, you throw darts at pillars, and then you try to eat to full health. Now... I don't have very many brews, which is unfortunate. Uh, I have 14, so I'm going to go in without brews, and there's a chance that I don't need them, which would be great, but if I do end up dying or needing to te teleport out, uh, I will have them for when I know the mechanics a little bit better. Uh, but for now, I think I'm just going to go and give it a shot. All right, here we go. I think I just enter Temple of Light, and then we're in. Let's do it. Wow, Quest Helper even tells me which one's the right one. This is cheating. Oh, that was easy. Heck yeah. So I definitely didn't realize that there really wasn't anything to do whatsoever unless one of the mechanics was going out. So I didn't need to bring even a single prayer potion when I brought four. And could have had more food in my inventory to make the last part a little bit safer instead of ending on like 29 HP. But hey, we did it first try. And let's talk about Priftinus. Well, I was trying to talk a little bit about Priftinus when I saw there was a crystal impling over here. So that's 
cool. Uh, that's one of the things that it unlocks is crystal implings. Uh, and you can get some cool stuff from them, like two dragon daggers. The main reason, though, I'm going to be going after every single crystal impling that I see. Uh, there is a 1 in 128 chance to get the elven signet, which is on one of the tiers. It's either hard or elite. I don't remember. It's probably hard, because it's not that difficult to get. Uh, and it's not particularly useful. I mean, you can combine it with the celestial ring, and then you can combine the effects. And the effects of the Elven Signet are, uh, it has a 10% chance not to use a charge when using crystal equipment, or the, uh, the Bofa, or the sword, I forget the name of it. So, I mean, it's kind of useful, but it's more so just so that if I can get it passively, uh, before I roll the task, that'd be nice, that way I don't have to just, like, world hop in Priftonus looking for crystal implings, because that would kind of suck. So, yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Priftonus. Priftonus is by far the biggest area unlock in the game. There's tons of useful shops, useful NPCs, skilling places, bosses, etc. Uh, I don't think I'll have time to go over everything in this video, but notable stuff include obviously the gauntlet, the reason that we're here. Uh, there is a bank very close to a furnace and an anvil. There is a POH portal, which I'm going to move my house here. That's actually why I'm standing next to this guy. Uh, mostly because I don't have many teleport crystals, and this way I can just home teleport and get to the city. There is an agility course, there's a sawmill next to some hardwood trees. There's so many useful things here that I literally can't say them all at one time. But this is a huge unlock for the account, super excited to get this, and like I said, now we have access to the gauntlet, the main reason we're here. So let's talk about that. All right, this is it, the Gauntlet. Uh, the Gauntlet is a very interesting, quote-unquote, boss in Old School RuneScape. Uh, it's not necessarily a boss. Technically, the boss is the Hunliff. But the whole area is very unique in the sense that it's essentially a RuneScape 3 dungeoneering dungeon, but in Old School RuneScape. So you go in, and you don't get to take any of your equipment or supplies in with you. And then you go through the rooms, you unlock new weapons and armor, you get some supplies, and then you go and fight a boss at the end. And then after you kill the boss, you go to the chest and you get some loot. So uh, it's kind of interesting because you don't really need any weapons or armor. Obviously levels will still help, but uh, it's not dependent on how strong your equipment is. It's more, I guess you would say, skill-based. Uh, which I, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any skill. I've done the gauntlet a few times on leagues, which is a complete joke because you get to keep all your, uh, or you got to keep all of your shattered relics in there with you, which made you super overpowered and made the boss extremely easy. So this is going to be the first time that I get to learn gauntlet the way it's intended to be done, which I guess I would say I'm excited for. Now that I don't have my hardcore status, I don't have to worry about dying, because this is a dangerous death if you die in the gauntlet, so you would lose your hardcore. So, yeah, let's just, let's, let's go, let's go do it. So, you'll notice when I try and go in the gauntlet, you can see, uh, yes, yeah, store my items here. Uh, all of my items and equipment disappear, and I get this little, uh, crystal scepter, which is what you use to light up each of the rooms that you go and explore. You also get each of the tools which I don't remember. I, for some reason, I remember just dropping all these. Do I need these? And a teleport crystal? I don't remember any of this, to be honest. So we're just, we're going in blind. Uh, but you can see you light up each of the rooms and they have some different uh, material stuff in there. And sometimes there is enemies. You kill the enemies to get uh, the upgrades for your weapons. And you mine the stuff, I think, or chop the stuff and you get... Some other stuff. I don't know what this bark's for. The crystal shards. You also need to make stuff. I really... I don't remember this at all. So you'll have to excuse my ignorance. I need to remember how to do this. So I'm just going to walk around aimlessly for a bit. But for now, I'm just going to be learning and uh, figuring out stuff as it goes. So the fishing spots are where you get the paddlefish, which are going to be the food in here. This friend bark is used along with the crystal ore and some crystal shards to make the armor pieces. And then the crystal shards and 
the other things you use to make the weapons? I don't really remember. I can just tell that all the people that have done like a thousand KC at Gauntlet are going to be like, No, that's not what this is for. You're doing it wrong. And I'm like, I, I don't care, man. I'm learning and I'm having fun. I remembered why I dropped all my tools at the beginning when I was doing this on Leagues. Because I didn't make any armor. Because I was so strong, I didn't need any armor. So I didn't bother with any of the bark or the ore or anything. I just dropped everything. Now it's making sense. Alright, so I forgot that there was a time limit to how long you were allowed to prepare for. And I was not... I was I wasn't I wasn't doing anything. I was looking up stuff and trying to figure everything out. So I I didn't I didn't win that time, as you might be able to tell from the adamant scimitar in my inventory. Uh, but now I'm starting to remember how to do this gauntlet thing. So hopefully this time will go better. But uh, yeah, let's just let's let's try that again. And hopefully I don't take 800 hours to get all my stuff this time. You can see up in the top left here that it does show you that you do have a limited amount of time for your preparation. I'm just blind and didn't notice it and forgot that it existed entirely, so yeah, my bad. So the three things that you need going into the Hunlift fight are two different weapons. Uh, because he'll use a protection prayer on the weapon style that you're using, after you attack him, I think it's three times with a certain style, he'll put up the protection prayer for that. So you have to have at least two different weapons so that you can actually damage him, and you need supplies, and you need armor. But you don't really need armor, but you need armor. When you're bad at the game and you don't know the mechanics, you need armor. So I'm trying to, currently, I'm trying to get uh, two weapons and hopefully upgrade them. And uh, you can see here, killing the big bear got me that crystal spike, which I believe is the upgrade for the halberd. Uh, so that will be one of my weapons, and I got a second weapon frame, so I can make a second weapon. Uh, I got my two weapons, I'm trying to upgrade my armor, then I will get some supplies, and then I will try my best. So, I've managed to get all of my perfected armor, a perfected halberd, and an attuned bow. Hopefully this is enough. You get teleported into the Hunla fight when you're, uh, late, but generally you would just walk in, and then you, you, you kill the boss. Now, the boss, uh, I don't, I don't recall the mechanic, is that, is that mage, or is that a range attack? Actually, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm gonna figure it out, but I don't know. So then you can see, he switches to, uh, Prey Melee, so I have to go to my range attack, and then, uh, when he does that little animation is when he's switching attacks. I, I think that's range, I don't know, he's still hitting me. Uh, so that's uh, tornadoes. So you wanna you wanna dodge the. Listen, man, I I don't know. I'll figure it out. I don't know right now. Uh, I just it, it, cut me some slack. I've done it. I have killed the boss. Excellent. So that's the gauntlet. It took me like halfway through that Hunlift fight to actually remember the mechanics, but it's already coming back to me, which is good. And I realize now that I didn't even really talk about why we're here, so let's do that for a sec. So the Gauntlet has five items in the collection log. The pet, the Gauntlet cape, which is a uh, cape you get for completing the Corrupted Gauntlet a single time. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then the three items that we're actually after for the task are the armor seed, the weapon seed, and the enhanced weapon seed. Uh, any of these three would count towards the task, these two wouldn't. And the weapon seed, uh, well, the drop rates on these three seeds are not as cut and dry as you may think, which I will go over to the Wikipedia page to talk about. As you can see here, there are two different drop tables, one for normal mode and one for corrupted mode. And the normal mode drop rates are significantly rarer than the corrupted mode. So you would think that I would do the corrupted mode to have the better drop chance. Uh, the corrupted gauntlet is scary and much harder. So I'm going to start with the normal mode for a bit until I remember what I'm doing. And then we'll move on to the corrupted mode. Uh, like I said, the gauntlet cape, as you can see, it always drops once you do the corrupted mode once. And that is a separate task just on the passive tier that doesn't really count for anything. But if I can actually get to where I can clear the corrupted mode consistently and somewhat quickly, 
Uh, the increased drop chance would be very nice on these. Uh, as you can see, I mean, the enhanced crystal weapon seed is sort of the big one. That would be awesome. That's what you turn into the Bofa or the sword. But obviously, I would choose the Bofa because it's extremely strong. And a 1 in 2,000 chance from the regular mode is not so good. But 1 in 400 is definitely manageable. So I'm going to get right back into the normal mode here and just get my bearings, make sure I understand what's going on again, and then we'll go try the corrupted mode. The difference between the corrupted and the normal version of the gauntlet is all the enemies have increased stats, so they do more damage and take longer to kill. You only have seven and a half minutes to prepare instead of 10, and the boss at the end also has increased stats and has 1,000 health instead of 600. So it's not that much harder, but I'm still not quite comfortable, particularly with the prepping. I feel like it takes me about eight to nine minutes to prep right now. And even then I'm not fully prepping because I know I don't need that much food. So I'm not quite ready to do the corrupted version. Gonna keep doing the normal version for a bit here, but it's not that much harder. I say as someone who hasn't done it yet. I just remembered why the Hunliff fight felt a little bit different to me when I was just doing it. Uh, compared to when I was killing it on leagues. Obviously on leagues, it was completely different because I was stronger and I was doing the corrupted version and whatever. But I think the main difference was I remember switching my own attacks, uh, prayers and weapon more frequently. And it's because I was using runes that gave me the double tap set effect and it counted for two attacks on Hunliff's uh, protection pairs, prayer swap. And so I was having to switch between my own attacks more often so that makes more sense to me now why it felt so different. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to be better at it. It just makes sense in my brain. Now, just like myself, you may be a little bit confused why there's only two gauntlet tasks, both in the hard tier when there are three gauntlet uniques. But the last of the gauntlet uniques, which is most likely going to be the enhanced weapon seed, uh, isn't actually on either of the tiers. It's in the extra tier. But most of the time, uh, you'll end up getting it when I'm doing a gauntlet for elite clues. Gauntlet's really good for elite clues, so I'll probably end up doing a lot of gauntlet, and therefore we'll get the Bofa eventually. But for now, uh, it would be really cool to get one of the armor seeds instead of the weapon seeds, just because they're more useful and more rare. But either way, we'll get what we get, I guess. Man, sometimes you just run the entire perimeter of the map just to find one of the things that give you the better weapons? Like, jeez. Okay, I'm getting, like, way better at pretty much every aspect of this, so this shouldn't be as bad. I might be able to move on to the corrupted version fairly quickly. I think I need a little bit more practice with the boss, but, I mean, as you can see, my time's gone down from 13 to 12 to 10 minutes very quickly. So, yeah, feeling good. Or maybe we just get the drop right here. Never mind. Okay, I'm getting a lot better at actually killing the boss, which is good to see. And I got a combat achievement that I don't know exactly what it is, uh, but that is nice. Uh, as you can see, my Hunliff kill time was 1 minute 56 seconds, which is a lot better than before. But the prep time is still pretty long. I don't understand how I can get good enough armor and weapons. I mean, I guess I didn't even eat any food that time, maybe one or two, but maybe I don't need as much food. I, I don't know. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Maybe this is the point where I should go and look up a guide on how to do this better. But I'm feeling more confident, at least with the boss mechanics now which is nice. That's sort of the limiting factor. I mean, it doesn't matter if you can prep perfectly. If you don't know how to kill the boss, you're not going to get any loot. So yeah, feeling better about that. If we take a look at the wiki again here, uh, talking about the drops that we actually care about. Now, the enhanced crystal weapon seed is going to be rare either way. So just pretend that doesn't exist. If we get it, great. If not, that's totally fine. But the drops that we care about are going to be the weapon seed and the armor seed. And going from the normal gauntlet to the corrupted mode, drops the drop rate from 1 in 120 to 1 in 50, which means if we die 50% of the time, we're still more likely to get the drop faster on the corrupted mode. But if we die 66% uh, of the time, i.e. we only get one kill in every three attempts, then 
it would be better to do the normal mode, considering I can kill it pretty much every time on the normal mode. So until I get good enough to where I can feel I can do the Corrupted Gauntlet successfully at least 50% of the time, then it's not going to be worth it to try it. So like I said before, I'm going to keep going with the normal mode for a little bit until my prep times get below like, well, I guess below that 730 mark that I would need to for the Corrupted Mode, even though the Corrupted Mode prep is going to take longer because the enemies will take slightly longer to kill. Uh, that's sort of the mark that I'm looking at. Once I get my prep times down below uh, 730, and again, I'm feeling confident killing the boss, then we're going to switch to the Corrupted Mode. I realize now that I've been doing these gauntlet kills and I actually already have an elite clue in the bank, so I'm going to go try and do this first. That way we can start building up elite caskets, hopefully. I don't know if I'll be able to complete it, but might as well go try. Yeah, just as expected, I need partial completion of Dragon Slayer 2 for that clue, so that's not going to happen right now, uh, unfortunately. But like I said, going to try and do all the elite clues. Probably not going to be able to do many of them, but it's still worth it. Oh, I just got 97 hit points while doing this. That was unexpected. I think I'm going to stop including all of the drops at this point. I think you get it. Gauntlet is great drops. Corrupted Gauntlet's even better, but uh, I'm still going to obviously be recording myself looting all the chests because I want to record myself getting the drop, but I don't think you need to see myself getting, you know, four rune full helms and a rune halberd every time, so. Because this is the first time getting crystal shards in the account, I did also want to mention some stuff you can do with those. Uh, you can add them to potions to make them into divine potions, which it makes it so the boost that you get from the potion doesn't decay over time for five minutes, and then after five minutes you lose it all. So useful for bossing, more so with like super combat potions, less so with the super attacks and strengths. I don't know if I would ever make divine super attack or strength pots, but that is an option. You can also make enhanced crystal keys, which I'll go over in a sec, but... Uh, basically, there's a better crystal chest that you have to use a crystal shards with a crystal key to unlock it. Uh, then you can make the crystal armor, weapons, tools, etc. Pretty much anything crystal, you need crystal shards to either charge it or make it. So, crystal shards will be very useful going forward on the account. Uh, very happy to unlock them, but for now, we really need the uh, armor seed or weapon seeds to make them super useful. So, let's get back to the gauntlet. Oh, that, that fell fast. That has to be a new PB. Heck yeah, 936. Any loot? Negative. Oh, we're gaming now. That has to be a PB. 913, look at me go. Give me the item. All right. Oh, that was actually a two second PB. I didn't even notice, cool. Hello, game? Where are the dragons, please? Any- any day now? Unbelievable. They actually exist. Oh, there's the 20kc task, I'm assuming. And we're gonna get the drop. Never mind. Well, the only way to learn is to learn by doing, so I'm gonna try the corrupted version. We'll see what happens. Oh, let's go. Dad. So, I'm not going to lie. I think that went as perfectly as it could in the preparation stages, and I still barely made it. Now, admittedly, I didn't know what corrupt paddlefish were until I realized they were Karamblam type combo food. So, now that I know that, I won't make as many, and I'll actually use them properly. But other than that, my prep went amazingly, and I still barely made it. So, that didn't really fill me with confidence, but I might try a few more. Also, I think I mentioned this before, but the gauntlet cape does literally nothing other than look kinda cool. Okay, that's gotta be a PB. 804, I'm gaming. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't need to upgrade my armor as much now. I'm feeling a lot more confident with the Hunlift mechanics, so in the future, I can definitely go a little bit faster than I am. Uh, that was just a regular gauntlet. I've gone back to regular gauntlet. It's a little bit more chill for me. Like I said, still learning, so yeah. Okay, yeah, doing these with significantly less armor and faster prep time, definitely going to be the way to go. 729 right there. 
Oh, I just noticed that was KC number 31, which means we have passed halfway on the drop rate, assuming that I'm just completely ignoring the enhanced crystal seed. The other two both are 1 in 120, so 1 in 60 to get either one of them. So yeah, just passed halfway. Or at least the theoretical halfway mark. Obviously, you're not guaranteed to get it in 60 chests, but you know what I mean. Got myself another crystal impling here. Pretty much every time I finish a gauntlet, I loot the chest, and then I go outside and just check if there are any crystal implings around. Like I said, hopefully I can get this signet passively, maybe right now. Okay, never mind. But yeah, if you ever see me uh, include a clip of opening a crystal impling, that's how I got it. Oh, this is going to be a big PB. 651, heck yeah. Oh my goodness, that was far too close. Uh, I decided to try out some more Corrupted Gauntlet, because why not, you know? Oh! And immediately rewarded! Let's go! That that feels good, you know? I, I've been doing so many regular gauntlets, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to learn how to kill Hunliff. You know, it'll be worth it in the long run. And then immediately rewarded. <laughs> feels good, man. But we're, we're done! We can get a new task! Let's go do it! Alright, here we go. We can complete the gauntlet task. 7% on the hard tier. And let's see what we are going to go do. Mauritania Hard Diary. Uh, I don't know what the requirements are for that. But that's what I wanted to get the extra runes for all the Barrows tasks. So that's good. Uh, let's go see if there are any problems with that. This is actually, this is great. I, I've done everything. Now, the only concern is this started the Great Brain Robbery. I actually have started this. Uh, I needed to go there to do an elite clue. Uh, but I don't know how far I need to get in this. So I might need to progress a bit farther than that. But other than that, we've, we've done everything. We got it all. And just looking at the rewards, the rewards are actually awesome. There's so many useful things here. Bone Crusher is great. Uh, the double mort my fun guy when casting bloom is great. 50 cent more prayer experience, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 50 cent more runes from Barrow's chest. That's the one I was talking about. That is awesome. Uh, 7.5 more slayer experience. I didn't even know that was a thing. Cool. Uh, yeah, this'll, this'll be great. But that's gonna be it for this one. We made tons of progress in this episode. Five new quests ranging from extremely easy to extremely long and difficult. And, I mean, look at all this loot we got, too. I mean, uh, th uh, Gauntlet is awesome. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the Crystal Weapon Seed yet. I'll figure that out next episode. But for now, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, and it takes like two seconds. And maybe make sure you're subscribed while you're down there. Over 50% of the people that watch my video aren't subscribed, so if you could, that would be very nice. And a big shout-out to all of my channel members. The lowest tier is only $2 a month, and it really helps me out. So if you want to see your name here with these people, maybe consider joining. And a special shout out to my tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW and Jack Stalmer, for the continued support. I really appreciate it, guys. But that's going to be it from me. In the next episode, we'll figure out what to do with this Crystal Weapon Seed and go and do the Mortania Hard Diary, among other things, I'm sure. So yeah, see you then.